Good morning. It's 7 after 10 on a Friday morning. That means it's time for The Real Estate Fix. I'm your host, Rich Sherman. That's why we call the show The Real Estate Fix with Rich Sherman, because I like saying my name a lot, apparently. Uh, Thank you guys for tuning in. I appreciate it. Happy National Donut Day to everyone out there who's listening. I found out this morning, I should have known this ahead of time, but this morning I found out today is National Donut Day. I am very excited about that. So for those of you who who can hear me, go have a donut for National Donut Day. It's a good thing. Support, I don't know, your local donut shops. I certainly did. Anyway, I like the ones with the, the cronut ones with a little bacon on top. That's my, my latest thing. But anyway, uh, so yeah, happy National Donut Day. Uh, today we're going to have a good time on the show today, as we always do. We've got a special in-studio guest. Uh, we have Michelle with the uh, with Buster's Barn, which is a fantastic charity. They rescue farm animals and all sorts of animals and things like that. They're up in Leona Valley, and we're going to hear all about kind of the stuff we did to help save the barn, which we're very proud of. Michelle did it. We just helped out. Uh, but happy to help because we get that question a lot about what we do as far as foreclosure defense. We're going to get into that a little bit today. But before we get started with all that good stuff, let's do a little bit of a market snapshot as we like to do every Friday morning for everybody. Uh, nothing of a big surprise. The same conditions still exist. Uh, interest rates went up a little bit. According to the good people at U.S. World New, US News and World Report, the uh, current 30-year fixed interest rate has now jumped to 7.24% as a national average, uh, up from about six and three quarters about a week ago, which is not great. There are still mortgages out there. Now, keep in mind that 7.24% is a national average. Uh, the better your credit is, the more you're putting down, etc., the better you know, mortgage rate you're going to be able to get. Uh, Sam at the uh, Mortgage Hub, who we like to talk about a lot, sponsor of the show, friend of the show, and a fantastically good lender I recommend all the time. We send most of our clients to Sam uh, because he is just that good at fixing these problems and getting loans for people that otherwise couldn't get them, getting him good loans, which is fantastic. Uh, we just had a client this week, early this week, who needed a reverse mortgage. She was turned down by everyone, everywhere. Thought she couldn't possibly do it. She was going to have to sell her house and go and live with family or something like that. And Sam found a way to get it done. So we're not done with it yet. We're still in the woods a little on that, but he'll get it done. And we'll get her her reverse mortgage. And that way she can get uh, money out of her house to live on rather than having the house taking money out of her. And uh, hopefully she'll stay there a good long time. But anyway, let's talk about the market. So yeah, mar- mortgage interest rates are up a little bit. Um, it's You can still, Sam's been able to find people rates this last week, about six and three quarters, which is still better than the 7.24 that's being at. That's uh, the national average. Uh, and it's going to keep going up. I think I have said exactly that uh, for the last several weeks. That it was going to keep going up throughout the year. It'll yo-yo a little bit, but ultimately it's going to go up. And I, if I'm not mistaken, the actual bet I made on the air was that if it doesn't break 7% by the end of the year, I will shave my beard. And I'm fairly um, attached to my beard, as those of you who know me know. Uh, and it looks like it's safe. It looks like it is safe. With deference to my wife and daughter, I'll still trim it down a bit. But it's, it's, it looks like my beard is safe because we're over 7% already. Uh, we'll see what happens later in the year. I'm hoping that since it's come up over 7 now, and because the uh, uh, the Fed is telling us that inflation rates are down a little bit, uh, the job reports were really, really good. So hopefully that will translate into the interest rate coming back down a little bit because it really needs to get to about 55 before it's going to settle out and the market's going to get healthy again. Now, having said that, those of you who are in the market or have been watching the market are sort of wondering, why is it, if Rich is saying that the market is down, and it is, why are housing prices still going up a little bit? Why is it, we talked about the dead cat bounce, I won't go into that again, but housing prices are going up a little bit because there is a, there's a race to the bottom right now between supply and demand. Everything in real estate is dictated, just like most uh, industries, with supply and demand. If your supply goes down and your demand remains constant, or the demand goes up, then prices go up. If supply goes up and demand goes down, then prices go down. And what's happening is the entire real estate market as a whole is shrinking, or has already shrunk. Uh, We've lost about 35-40% of the entire market, and that's volume of houses sold. Uh, We've talked about this many times over the last couple of weeks, but the entire real estate market as a whole, the number of houses sold in 2023 is going to be off 35 to 40%. It's going to be a big, ugly, nasty number. There's all kinds of reasons for that. A lot of people, uh, Fannie Mae tells us that 70% of all homeowners with mortgages right now in the United States, 70% have interest rates at 4% or below, which as we just talked about, now we're looking at about 7. So anyone who sells a house who's got a 4% interest rate or lower is looking at a heck of an increase in mortgage, not just because they buy up to another house or buy it, but the interest rate alone is going to dictate that. So that makes your mortgage payment about 40% higher. So that's a lot to take in. So that's why a lot of people, and again, I use myself as an example, I'm a perfect move up buyer. I'm not selling. I have an interest rate at 3.65. Why would I want to sell that house? Why would I want to get rid of that loan and trade it in for something at 7%? So that's a lot. That's not the only market factor, but it's one of the biggest ones. 
So we're seeing supply is really way off. And there are still buyers in the market, certain buyers in certain market segments better, better than others, but there are fewer buyers as well. But the reason prices in our area have held is because supply has dropped faster than demand. Both are shrinking. There is less supply now. There is less demand now. But both are shrinking, and supply is simply, or demand rather, is... is uh, Supply, I'm going back to this. Supply is shrinking faster than demand. I my own words this morning. It's been a long Friday morning. But anyway, um, so that's what's happening. It's kind of a race to the bottom as the economy of, of houses shrinks, which you need to do a little bit. I don't know about 40%. That's going to be a little tough. For those of you who are uh, fellow realtors out there, you know what I'm talking about. We're all hurt because there are just fewer transactions going on at the moment. They're, they just are. So still a lot of people in trouble, though, which is where I come in. So that's the market. That's where we're at. Uh, expect housing prices to stay pretty much unchanged throughout the next week or two. I would even say they're going to stay relatively the same throughout the month. Uh, there'll be a little bit of a drop. Not a whole heck of a lot, but there'll be a little bit. Uh, and again, prices have come down year over year, nearly th a little over 30% in our area. So if you had a house that was worth 800000 in April of 2022, that same house is worth about seven thirty here we, as we are here in April in 2023. And that's just the news as we see it. So the mortgage rates are up. There are problems all over the place as far as that is concerned, but business is still happening. There's just a lot less of it. So if you're out there looking for a house, you're going to have fewer options, which means there's going to be more competition, which means if the house is listed for 800000 if it's properly listed, it's going to sell for 800000 or more. But that doesn't mean that this is sustainable, and it also doesn't mean for buyers that you have to buy. Wait a little bit. The more interest rate will come down a little bit. Uh, I would get into the market now because I don't think the interest rate is going to drop enough to make a big enough difference. Uh, and I do think the housing market is going to drop about another 5% before the year is end. But again, there's so little out there on the market that I hope I'm wrong about that because I'd like to see the housing market go back up. I own houses. I'm in real estate. But I think it's going to uh, go down a little bit. But if you're a buyer... And if you're a seller, get in the game. Things are only going to get worse from here on in. So if you're a buyer, buy now. If you're a seller, sell now because it's only going to get harder. Interest rates are going to get higher and prices are going to get a little bit lower. But the difference is to a buyer, the interest rate is going to be much more important to you than the house than the purchase price of the house. Because a slide of 5% in housing prices is helpful. Save a few thousand bucks on the purchase of the house. But when you consider that... Uh, compared to an interest rate rise of, say, even a quarter point, you're going to spend more than that in your first year in mortgage payments, let alone what that looks like over 30 years. So, yeah, if you're a buyer, get into it now. If you're a seller, get into it now. Don't wait. Uh, if you're curious about any of this stuff, if you want, <laughs> I did have somebody call earlier in the week who wanted a really deep dive on why I think what I think, and I was happy to do that. I'm happy to quote... Uh, Quote uh, chapter and verse anytime. I read a lot of places. I read Business Insider and I read Next Tuesday and I read all these various uh, real estate forums. So that's where a lot of this information comes from. So if anybody has any questions, feel free to call me anytime. I'm always happy to walk you through why I think what I think. You can feel free to disagree with me. I am not always right, but I'm certainly right a lot more than I'm wrong. And I'm right more than most people you know in real estate. And I think the uh, 30, what are we figuring out, 34 year track record pr proves that out. But anyway, so beyond, mar beyond the market stuff, let's talk a little bit about foreclosure defense, one of my favorite, favorite topics. Uh, it comes up a lot. This is something I do for free. It's something I've been doing for free for to helping people for many, many, many years. Uh, a little over 30 years now we've been doing it. And we're awfully proud of it. We are not a government agency. We're not sponsored by anybody. Everything we do in this field is self-funded. Uh, you know, God bless our government, what they do, and a lot of the stuff they do we take advantage of. But uh, for our particular activities were a little bit better off, I think, being completely independent of any government or anything else as far as that goes. There are still rules, and of course we play within them. Everyone has to. Uh, but I think we're, we're better advocates kind of on our own at this point. But anyway, so what we do is, I get that a lot, what exactly do we do to protect people from foreclosure? And I can answer that question very simply. What we do is we get involved. We sit down with the client, we go through their entire story. We're going to hear a little about Michelle's story, which she comes on a little bit later. And uh, we kind of pick through it because I know what we're looking for. And we create what we call the simple narrative because you have to get your story down to something that can be reduced to one page or less, which is a, a lot to ask. If someone tell your life story in one page, tell your life story in one paragraph, which is a lot to ask. But we need to get it down and make it fairly simple because people at the banks either don't read or choose not to pay attention or have too many files or whatever. They're not all that interested in your personal story most of the time. But they need enough of it so the dollars and cents make sense. So what we do is we get involved with the client. We interview the client. We go through all of our questions. We get our I's, daughter, or T's crossed so we have the full narrative. Uh, and then we help you get to, together the um, application. Usually it's for, uh, we call them an RMA, Request for Mortgage Assistance. It's usually something like that. And we help you collect up your tax returns and your bank statements and all the various stuff that a bank needs uh, to look at a loan modification. Now, 
That's only one way of doing this. A loan modification is most popular, but there are a lot of things you can do to defend yourself from foreclosure. There are all kinds of tools out there. There are all kinds of systems out there, all kinds of programs you can take advantage of. Uh, we're going to be talking about the California uh, Mortgage Relief Program a little bit today, which is a fantastic program that the state offers. Uh, did Michelle a lot of good. She's going to talk about that, I'm sure, when she comes on. But uh, we put a lot of people through that program. That's a program that will give you up to $80,000 to get current with your mortgage. And they just give it to you. You don't pay it back. It's a state grant. And as government programs go, it's a good one. It's pretty easy to qualify for, and it's been around, and they're pretty well funded. So um, I recommend them highly. But um, So, yeah, we'll get you in touch with state programs like that. We'll get you in touch with federal programs if they're out there, if they're any to be had. Um, in this, in particular, we had one recently where uh, the bank did not know that they were qualified for the program. We had to tell the bank that you're you're – you are in this program. Whether you knew it or not, you are in it. Uh, and, uh, you know, my clients, you, you have a mortgage with very much like to take advantage of it. So can we please make that happen? And sure enough, we did. I think we had something similar on, uh, on the one we're going to talk about later today as well. But we get involved. We, we get involved. We act as a liaison between the client and the bank because often people have lives to lead and other things to do. And sometimes they just don't speak bank. We do. We speak the, we speak the language. So most of the time, it's a matter of putting together a plan and then going to the bank and saying, bank, if you foreclose on the house... This is what the financial history, the financial future looks like as far as this property is concerned. You guys cash out. You get what you can. That's fine. However, if we keep the client in the house, the bank will make more money because continuing to service, I don't care what business school you went to, 2% of something, 3% of something is still better than 100% of nothing. And that is the adage we subscribe to for that very reason. The hard part is often convincing banks that that's the way it goes. So we get them on the phone. We do it by, by fax, email, whatever we need to do. And we'll tell them that, look, your plan liquidates the property, gets, throws my client out into the street, and leaves you guys with, you know, not whole typically, and usually damages the bank, damages their investor. Our plan, in addition to having the benefit of keeping the client in the house, the bank and the, bank and the investor get to continue to make money on the property. They get to continue to make money on the loan, continue to service the loan. That's where the money is. It is in everyone's interest to keep the client in the house. It is good for the mortgage company because they keep getting a payment. It is good for the neighborhood because they don't have a derelict in the, in the neighborhood to deal with. Uh, it is good for the city because the city doesn't have to step in and deal with weeds and pools and things like that. It's good for the state. It keeps another uh, foreclosure off the books. Foreclosures hurt everybody. They don't always sell for less money. That's a popular misnomer. But they do damage the... Um, uh, sales prices in a neighborhood. You get too many foreclosures in a neighborhood, especially now, you get two on the same block, that block is going to hurt as far as sales are concerned. Not even because they sold for less money, just because the public knows there were two foreclosures here. Oh no, what's going on? And that will affect your ability to sell. It'll take longer and you're going to sell for less than you otherwise would, even though it had nothing to do with you. So we get in there and we fix these things. And we've been doing it for a long time. I'm oversimplifying it, but that really is it. It's just a matter of having a qualified, I don't consider myself a qualified advocate. I've been doing it long enough. And my team as well. Uh, we get in there as qualified advocates, and we, we fight like heck to get the bank to understand they are the bank is better off keeping this family in their home than by doing anything else. Um, you know, of course, we have a very slanted point of view. We want to keep people in their houses. That is our goal. It's all about giving back. I've been very fortunate that I've had a very lucrative real estate career, and years and years ago, uh, I decided to start doing this, and I started doing it for free, and I've been doing it for free ever since. We'll do it for free until the day I die, I think. Uh, because um, the people who need us the most typically couldn't afford us anyway, so why bother haggle over what it's going to cost? This is their house, for goodness sake. We get in there, we do it for free, and free means free. You don't owe us anything. Uh, it'd be nice if you used us to buy or sell a house in the future, because that's how we afford to pay for this, but free really does mean free. It doesn't mean you owe us something in the future, you're signing some sort of agreement to do something in the future, you promise to sell your house with us or something like that. We don't do that. It's just free. Um, you owe us nothing once it's done. I mean, you can give us a nice review. You can say nice things to other people. We like that. Uh, some clients feed us, which we're fond of as well in my office. But um, again, National Donut Day. But uh, no, free really does mean free. And we're very proud of the work that we've done. We've saved thousands of houses. There are lots and lots of families, lots and lots of people who still own homes today that I guarantee you would not had it been for our efforts. And we're very, very proud of that. So what do we do? We get in there. We get your story, we get the bank's story, we put the two together, we see if there are any programs we can fit you into that you might qualify for. We might have to you know, shave off some of the, the uh, edges of the square peg so it'll fit in the round hole for you uh, with some of these programs. But banks offer programs, the state offers programs, sometimes the city offers programs, sometimes there are federal programs. There's all kinds of stuff you can do. Sometimes the bank just made a mistake and they don't have the right to foreclose. Sometimes we find reversible error in loans. There's all kinds of stuff that goes into the, the sort of soup that is this process. But the important thing here is, and if you take nothing else out of this, just get this. We are qualified 
We are very good at this. We have a success rate of 80%. I don't know anybody else in the country who does the kind of work that we do, and certainly nobody who does it for free, and certainly nobody who has the kind of success rate we do. I mean, think about that for a second. We don't turn anybody back. We don't turn anybody away. Anyone who calls and asks for our help, we will give it, and we'll do it for free. And even despite not turning anyone away, we still have an 80% success rate. That means eight out of every 10 people we talk to, we are able to find them a permanent solution. Now, just so you know, the last time I looked, the national numbers for this and it's been years since we've seen any, honestly, for doing a modification or foreclosure defense on your own, about 8%. So on your own, you have about an 8% chance of success. That means you have a 92% chance of failure. With us, you have an 80% chance of success, a 20% chance of failure. I like your odds better with us than without us. And again, it's free, and if you're not happy, just tell us to go away. It's not a big deal. You don't owe us anything. Uh, It doesn't happen a whole heck of a lot because nobody else really does what we do, and certainly nobody does it as well as we do. So like I said, we're awfully proud of it, so I crow about it a bit. That's why. But again, we do this for free. So if you're in trouble, if you're in trouble with a mortgage, you're having trouble making the payment, please give me a call. And again, I'm going to give out my personal phone number. I keep doing this. It's 661. Keeps me busy. 714 one four zero zero. Again, that is my personal cell phone number. A lot of people think it's not. It is really. It's going off now as it's in my pocket. That really is my personal cell phone number. Six six one seven one four one four zero zero. And I do my best to answer that line twenty four hours a day, seven days a week. If I don't answer, it is because I'm either on the line with someone else, or I'm taking a nap, or I'm taking a shower, or I actually sleep on occasion. So sometimes I just can't get to it. So if I can't get, text me. I'll I'll call you back. I'll text you back. But the important thing is we're here, we're good at this, and we're happy to help you out. We do it completely for free. So if you're in trouble, give us a call. Uh, We're going to go to commercial here in just a minute. But before we go, I want to let you guys know we're going to have Michelle Stump on with Buster's Barn. She runs a, a nonprofit, Saving Animals. We're going to talk about what we're able to do for her. It's a really good example of the kind of stuff that we do. Uh, and we'll talk a little about the barn. And she's uh, trying to reach out to give you, raise some money for the barn because there's they're blind cows that need your money. They need to be fed. And chickens and all sorts of other things. So they need your help. So we're going to do that when we get back. When we get back, Michelle Stump from Buster's Barn. I'm Rich. This is The Real Estate Fix with Rich Sherman on your hometown station, 98.1 FM AM 1220. Hello, welcome back to The Real Estate Fix with Rich Sherman. I'm your host, Rich Sherman, on KHTS 98.1 AM 1220, your hometown station. We have a special guest, and thank you for coming in. This will be very exciting. Yeah. We have a special guest, Michelle from uh, Buster's Barn. And Buster's Barn, well, you'll do a better job of this. Tell them what Buster's Barn is. Well, howdy. Thanks for having us. Um, Buster's Barn. So I, back in 2014, I was a special needs dog rescue I started in 2010. But in 2014, we transitioned to farm animals. Um, farm animals are highly exploited and... Um, um, everyone loves dogs and everyone rescues dogs, but not too many people were out there rescuing cows and pigs and goats. So we decided to go ahead and start doing that. And our focus is keeping moms and babies together. Okay. So um, a lot of a lot of rescues want to take the babies because they're cute and who doesn't love a baby cow or a baby oh. sheep or baby goat? But we want to make sure the moms stay with their babies. So our focus is going into slaughterhouses, auctions, kill shelters, believe it or not, in and shelters where there's dogs and cats, there's pigs and goats and people who get pigs who don't realize they actually require a little bit of effort and work. Um, they're messy. They require a lot of effort. Yeah. And work. So yeah, I mean they're messy in terms of they need mud pools and they like to be out in the dirt. So a lot of people don't realize and, and pigs get bigger, so they end up in shelters. So we go and get the animals that people dump because seems, they don't realize what they're getting into. Seems unfair. I've seen cute cows and, and I've even seen a cute rooster once. Oh, yeah. Seems unfair well, to they're them. they're all cute. And, you know, we're trying to help people make the connection. There's no difference between, you know, your beloved cats and dogs and cows and goats. You know, uh, cows are big grass puppies, we call them. Well, <laughs> yeah, we were talking a little bit before you came on. You said you spent your morning chasing a blind cow. I did, yes, yeah, Sebastian. And a lot of our followers are know very well who I'm talking about. Yeah, it's amazing how these sighted cows... Don't get out when they clearly could see the, the fence has been taken down. But the blind cow just, he, I think it's because he just bulldozes through. And if there's wire or metal, it, it doesn't matter. When you're a 1,500-pound animal, <laughs> you're going to go through, uh, you know, metal. So. I, I, I get it. Sounds like my kind of cow. <laughs> um, so let's let's talk a little bit about, uh, about kind of the work you do. So you're in there, you're rescuing animals, and you're bringing them to the farm. You have a, a farm in Leona Valley mm-hmm. uh, that you own. And that you've turned over basically to uh, Animal Rescue, which yes. is fantastic and very, very nice. Yeah, how many animals do you have on the farm at the moment? Oh, gosh. I'd have to do a head count, but we're in the range of 140 to 150. Total, total mouths. That's, that's dogs and cats and roosters and, you know, uh, three crazy emus and a peacock that, named Merlin. That's, a, that's, that's, yeah, I was reading about Merlin actually. Yeah, last night. Merlin's amazing. That's, that's, uh, I saw there's, there's, if you guys get a chance, there's a fantastic YouTube video where uh, Michelle bought Merlin basically a friend, which is a little statue because he was going a little nuts. <laughs> and watching this thing, check out that, well, I shouldn't say this thing, that's not right. I'm watching Merlin uh, check out the statue, and he's not really sure if it's real or not, but it might be, so he starts to show off. And it is, 
hysterically funny. Oh, yeah. It is hysterically funny. Uh, well, Mike, the funny part for me is that I watched that with my 17-year-old daughter. And we have a rule in my house. We have a saying in my house that the only thing dumber than is that a teenage girl is a teenage boy. <laughs> and I think, that'll, 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 I think that holds true. I was a teenage boy. I'm aware. Um, and so we were, watching, we were watching that video. And my daughter looked at it and went, hey, Dad. Hey, Dad. That peacock's behaving just like your average teenage boy. And I oh, thought, yeah. oh, my God, that's so funny. Yeah, because he wasn't really sure. And then he thought, oh, I'll do it anyway. And his giant peacock feather. Well, and I'll tell you that when I got it because I didn't want him wandering. You know, we live off uh, the quarter mile up the road at dead ends and it circles. One night, and Merlin has been known to go across the neighbors. And I'm on good terms with them. So I just say, <laughs> hey, I don't I hope you don't mind him being under your window at 3 in the morning going, meow. Right, you know, I don't know if you know, peacocks meow. Meow! It's just so very loud. So he was going astray, and I didn't want him crossing the road. You know, why did the peacock cross the road? I don't know, to go look at their propane tank. Because he's a peacock. Yeah, but one night I'm calling him because he goes up in his tree at night, and one night he's not there. And I'm like, Merlin! I go, Meow! He's a quarter mile up the road in someone's tree. I drive my truck onto their property. Probably not the smartest thing to do because they don't like me anyway. But I went out on property. I go, where's my peacock? And they're like, he's, we can't help it. He's up at the tree. And I'm like, oh, my God. I mean, you can't get a peacock out of a tree. He's eventually going to come down. So I yelled at him that night. It's like at you know, 10 o'clock at night. I go, you better be home in the morning. Sure enough, he came back. So this statue that I got now, he has stayed home. He has stayed well, on the property now. I knew it wasn't for fun. I knew it was purposeful. Yeah. But it's, yeah. it's you got, if, you're, if you get a chance, guys, check out the YouTube video. You can find it under Buster's Barn. <laughs> I think you can find it at Merlin at Buzzword. It is. I'm gonna. It's, he's gonna it's, have his own page eventually. It's 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 it is, it's it's a short video, but it is hysterical. <laughs> Especially if you have teenagers or you, if you remember being one. Yeah, it is just so funny. <laughs> you know, I, I I just I love this bird. This is a bird after my own heart. But this, a lot of your animals are that way, as far as I'm concerned. So, all right. So you've got you've got Buster's Barn. You're rescuing animals. You've got 150 mouths to feed up there, um, which is an awful lot. Uh, and I know you guys just went through a bunch. Of, we'll talk about some of the loan modification stuff and some of the stuff we did to kind of save the barn and get to have, have yeah, trouble. Yeah, literally we'll, saved we'll talk about that. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a second. But what we really want to do, if you guys are out there listening, the barn's in a little bit of trouble. Um, not a lot of trouble because it's been in worse trouble over the years, I'm sure. But it's it's the last uh, weather that came through, you were telling me, really just beat the heck out of the place. Um, as weather is apt to do, and all the pigs and cows and and uh, Merlin and everybody else, there are lots a lot of mouths to feed. It's expensive and it's a lot of work and everything else. And, and I know you're out there doing the work, and we applaud you for it. Um, but if you're out there and you're listening, we'll set this up uh, as as one of the sponsorship pages to the show here. But we're going to ask you to donate, please. Uh, they need they need help, even if it's only a couple of bucks. It'll it'll feed a, it'll feed a cow for a day or two, for a couple of days, or give a lot of money. It'll feed a cow, feed a couple of cows for a month. So if you're out there and you're listening, please can you tell them where do they go. Yeah, go do our. Um, yeah, I sent you the links, and yep. hopefully you have them up there. We have we have social media, so we have Facebook, and we have Instagram, and there's a GoFundMe on our Instagram, especially GoFundMe, you know, links to our Venmo, links to our PayPal. We're a five hundred one c three, so donations mm-hmm. are tax deductible. Yeah. So and it, it does help, and people think oh ten dollars isn't going to really help. It does. It adds up. We have a Patreon page as well, and that's where you can sign up and be a monthly donor. Um, ten dollars a month. I guarantee you, it makes a difference when enough people do it. Because hay prices doubled over the last couple of years, and they still they're still double what we used to pay. Grain prices went up during COVID, the pandemic, everything went up. I think delivery costs were the were in charge, the you know, and then yeah. the drought and all that. But yeah, we're still struggling with the the rising costs of grain and, and hay. So I don't want to put you on the spot, but what do you suppose it costs a month just to feed one cow? Um, what it costs a month? Well, I right now yes. I have seven cows, and it's three thousand a month in hay. Whoa. So you can kind of do the numbers on that. One cow a month is going to be probably four or five bales, and that's twenty five dollars a bale. So one hundred twenty five a month. That's yeah. That's, yeah, on a that's minimum, a and that's, that's not what not that's not with grains and supplements. And then you've got vet care and hoof care, and yeah, yeah, it's a lot. So you're looking at you know what eight hundred bucks a month per cow? Uh, yeah. per cow? That's a lot. Um, that's a lot. Yeah. Well, the point is the point is I don't want to get the math of it, but the point is it's just it's a lot. It's, it's a every, lot. Every little bit. Well, helps. and then there's the difference between hays, and you can do a you can lower the prices by feeding them a very low quality hay. But uh, I don't want to feed my animals cow hay. Well, cow hay is a moldy hay. You can get it for cheaper. I'm not feeding them moldy hay. They can eat moldy hay. I don't want to. Who would yeah. want to eat moldy hay? Yeah. So I feed my cows a little higher grade hay. I care about well, them. I want them to live, you know? Yeah, well, they're, they're <laughs> so, yeah, rescue, quality yeah. hay costs a lot of money. And yeah. we want to clean up the farm. Like you said, with the uh, the winter weather, this was a horrific storm. Winter was horrible. We're at 3,500 elevations, so that was ravaging. I mean, my God, the storm, the wind, the snow, the rain, flooding. We're still trying to clean up. We need to make it aesthetically pleasing. People want to come and have a nice experience. I mean, sure. we've had people come the way it is, and they're like, it's amazing. Your animals are well taken care of. But we want, it to, have, we want to have nice little paths and carved areas for people to walk and visitors, a little gazebo area for them to have lunch in. And, 
you know. Well, let's let's talk about that. So if you're if you're not if you're listening and you're not in a position to donate money, which is we're all everybody's have trouble. That's fine. Uh, but what specialties do you need? Maybe we can find some people out there. People who can do uh, construction, uh, construction, carpentry, who can build things. We need. We had a, a tree come down. Fox Eleven did a story on us, and a tree, a big cottonwood tree, came down on one of the pig barns, the pig barns while right. the pigs were in it. Yeah. So um, that tree still. We had it cut apart, but uh, that barn is is wrecked. We still have not been able to um, repair and rebuild. So if someone can, if we can buy the materials, or someone can donate the materials, maybe someone can donate materials, and someone else can build literally just a eight by five pig barn, eight by ten. Shed, well, we're, we're pretty know? good at putting services together because uh, given what I do, the kind of work that we do and the houses that we've saved, and we, and we do this completely for free, there are a lot of people out there who fit some, a lot of who are in construction who feel like they owe us a favor. So if you're one of those, and you don't, again, free means free, but if you feel like you owe us a favor and you feel you want to help out, you want to pay forward. Here's, yeah, here's, here's a good way to do that. Um, uh, you can co- contact me if you'd like. Uh, you can certainly contact Michelle. Uh, through the, we'll have her stuff up on the uh, page and that. But you can also contact me. Just call my cell phone. Can't make it easier than that. 661-714-1400. Just call me at that number or text me. And if you want to volunteer, we'll get you set up. We'll get you out there. And I'm even going to swing a hammer. I don't know if I'm going to help, but I'll, I'll, I don't know if I'll be helpful, except for comic relief. But man, we'll go out there as well. So, yeah, you need a barn built. What else you need? Uh, people who Drainage. just, speaking of how you can come out, if you can hold a shovel, you can help us. Um, you can muck <laughs> it up. Literally, we just need to muck some oh, stuff up. I can do that. Uh, people could spend just an hour and literally pick up strings, all the, the, the bale strings from the hay bales. Mm-hmm. We need that. The winds just blow everything away and knock over dumpsters and trash cans. We need people to just do physical manual labor. Come out and fill a wheelbarrow and then fill it and fill our dumpster. Well, we can do that. Yeah, just man, just pick up trash, so, trash so, and debris. Yeah, so if you guys are listening, give me a call or contact Michelle. You can talk to her through the station as well, and we'll get you out there. We'll set it up. Let me make an event out of it. Let me get a restaurant out there. Yeah, you might get attacked or molested by our small rooster, who's really one of our roosters, who's really (laughs) aggressive. And I don't know why he just attacks people, but um, I don't, you know. But so you know, wear boots or wear some kind of chaps or something. Yeah, don't don't wear open toes. He's kind of aggressive. Yeah, don't don't wear open toe shoes. (laughs) No. Uh, I tell you all the time, don't go working on a farm with open toe shoes. No. Anyway, it's yeah, it's it's, just don't think it through. But anyway, so yeah, so anything you do to help, well, she'll take it. Anything we do to to help save the barn. Uh, Let's talk a little bit. Now we talked about what you guys do and kind of what the what Buster's barn is. Um, and Buster was named after it's the first piggy rescue. First piggy right? rescued, yeah. He's since passed away, but we just kept the name. Yeah, yeah that's a stuck. great name. It's yeah. a great name. Plus, it's he was our it's boy. So let's talk about a little bit how, well, kind of how we met under the circumstances. You, I think, would you own a postcard from us or something? How did you originally hear about us? Uh, I, it was a friend, my friend Colette, who's one of my donors and dear friends. She referred me to somebody who knew you. He, he couldn't oh, take this case. And he said, I got a guy for you, Rich. And before I'd even talked to them, I had gone through a few agents and agencies, begged them to, I explained my case to them. Half of them didn't want to hear it. The other half were like, oh, God, that sounds way too complicated. I know my case is a little unique, and you, are, you know that, yeah. but uh, for it viewers, nice. yeah. It, 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 well, I mean, the probate and a nonprofit on the property and all that. It, was, but, it, had, it had a few more Yeah, it had parts, a few but. caveats. But, um, yeah, and I, the people I'd gone to, their advice was, um, I don't think I can help you. I think your best bet's just to sell. And I'd be more than happy to help you sell it. And I'm like, well, I yeah. don't want to sell my home. Do you understand? I have 150 farm miles. You were the rarity that went, oh, I can help you. I can fix it. And I'm like, okay, well, how much is this going to cost? Oh, nothing. I went, nothing? I go, come on, there's a catch, right? You went, no. Then you gave me, then you did something that nobody else did. You gave me your personal cell phone number. And I'm like, oh my God. And I'm like, yeah, right. I bet he's not going to answer. As soon as I call you, time. you answered. I'm like, yeah. oh my God, I'm dealing with someone who actually cares. Yeah. You did yeah. something no one else did. You got involved. Yeah. You got involved. No Thank one you. else wanted to do that. You had me come down, and then I met with you. I wrote down everything, like you said, my life on a page, and mm-hmm. I narrowed it down. Mm-hmm. And uh, and you itemized it, and you looked at it, and you went, okay, let me take it from here. And yeah. I went... Okay, we'll, we'll see where this we'll, goes. And it, it was amazing what you did. Well, thank you. We always got to figure out what parts we can use, what parts we need to leave out. Because it's very because the bank wants to hear your life story, and it's a ridiculous thing to take. And there's always some sort of, you know, people don't fall behind on their mortgages or get in trouble out of choice. There's usually they didn't buy jet skis. Something yeah. happened. There's in your case, I know you had some trouble with the. Uh, it was a series of things. Uh, My dad first, you know, yeah. he bought this house and the loan was in his name, and then he passed away. I'm left, and then a divorce, and then I'm left paying this. I'm a single mom running a nonprofit, trying to keep up. I now I had to take the payments over. I struggled with that. I did it for as long as I could, and then I couldn't. COVID hit. And then I, uh, while I was going to start going to school, become a licensed massage therapist to have a career, uh, they gave me a four parents. 
great, I'll take the forbearance. They even extended it. The lender even extended it. And I went, great. And in the back of my mind, I thought, oh, what's, uh, mm-hmm. so what happens at the end of it? Oh, we'll work that out. That was what I was told. Yeah. We'll either put it to the end of the loan or you can add it to your regular monthly payments. When you mm-hmm. I said, great. So I'm going to school here to get a career, to start making my own money. Mm-hmm. And then they promised me a loan modification last year. Uh-huh. Great. I went ahead, what they said on the phone, quite different than what happened. Well, I went ahead and made the payments. Little little uh, discrepancy, a little uh, different, well, different, different opinion about when I was supposed to make the payments. But I, the point is I made those three payments. They didn't honor that yeah. loan modification. Well, let, me fill in some of the, let me fill in some of the blanks there for yeah. the listeners just to make it a little bit easier. Uh, the bank involved here is a bank called MMC. Uh, they're not a very large bank. They are a problematic bank because the left hand never seems to know what the right hand is doing inside that bank. It's almost as if, I think there are only 14 people who work there and yet they don't speak to each other. It's, it's somewhat <laughs> astonishing. It's, and, and I, wish I, could t- I wish I could tell you that that is a, an unusual set of circumstances, but it's not. We get this stuff all the time. A large part of what we do with a lot of these uh, foreclosure defense cases is just get on the phone with the bank and say, do you guys even know your own policies? It's embarrassing that I know your policies better than you do. Um, and what you're talking about, by the way, the forbearance and was not out of the goodness of their heart. That's under the CARES Act, which they had really no choice but to conform. That was a right. federal law. Right. So the problem that happened in your case, which happens with a lot of the cases, is the banks get that they have to give you a forbearance during COVID. So you're not making your payment, but you're still rolling up all those payments. What they don't get is the, what's supposed to be the exit strategy there. What is supposed to happen is the bank is supposed to offer you either what's called a deferment, which is where they simply take the payments that are past due now, uh, your forbearance, and put it on the end of your loan. Right. So you're, if you had two years worth of deferment, or two years worth of forbearance, excuse me, it becomes a 32-year loan. It just gets tacked on to the end. And that's what most responsible lenders would have done. In this case, what MMC decided they wanted to do uh, was set you up with a loan modification, which is a perfectly acceptable exit strategy. They can do that as well if they actually do it. And in your case, what had happened is, just to clarify, is they offered you not one, but two, I think there were actually three total, but uh, at least two. Uh, trial periods, because what right. happens is when you get, when you go, and just so the listeners understand, when you apply for a loan modification, once the loan mod is accepted, the first thing a bank does is they put you into a trial period. Now, what that's the way that's supposed to work is you're supposed to go three months making the new trial period payment, and at the end of that trial period, that's when the bank then grants you the full loan modification. Now, in California, it's a little different than other states because the courts have held in California, if you get a trial period and if you make the payment like you're supposed to, which we're getting into in your case in a second, uh, then they have no choice choice, but to give you a loan modification under those exact same terms. So they don't have the ability to play bait and switch. That's the idea, at least in California. And what happened in your case is they gave you a loan modification, they or a trial period. They said, make these three payments. You made the first payment on time. You made the second payment four days late to their math. And I made the payment that they first said, and of course, then they sent yeah. a letter later saying a different payment. I'm like, oh, now you're yeah. switching during the modification. Yeah, and then you made the third payment on time. So what they decided to do is say, well, you didn't make the middle payment on time. Right. We're keeping the money, but we're still going to go back to foreclosure and we're back to foreclosure. And we're not going to apply the money to anything. To anything, yeah. It's, yeah. They held it in suspense. They would have applied it to the yeah. overall debt eventually, but still, whether it's they're foreclosing on a dollar or a million dollars, it doesn't matter. It's still a foreclosure. You lose the house, you lose the, you lose the, right. the buster's barn, goes away. Yeah. You know, the animals need a place to live. So, uh, extraordinarily easy to fix. Uh, it's just a matter of getting a hold of the bank and saying, what are you guys doing? You are literally going to create a foreclosure in which you lose money, bank, over a payment that was made four days late? Right. That's what lawsuits are made out of. That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Uh, this is, sure, give me, please, give me an adult because I'm tired of talking to the children at MMC. I need to talk to an adult because an adult is going to understand somebody who cares about the stock price of this bank or who cares about the investors of this bank is going to understand they are far better off keeping Michelle in her property, keeping the, for the animals living there, uh, the, for the uh, Buster's Barn living there and uh, uh, for, functioning than foreclosing. Not to mention, not to put too fine a point on it, had they actually gone to foreclose, it would have been a public relations nightmare for Absolutely. them. Absolutely. We would have seen to that because their plan, because you were four days late on a trial period, which by the way, trial period payments, as long as you make all of them within 90 days, you're good. That's the, that's right. the rule on the subject. doesn't matter if you're four days late. MMC to say that they were going to foreclose because it was four days late was simply their own decision. There's no rule for that at all. Uh, I had to point that out to them. They, didn't, they thought it was a federal law that if you did not, and it's not, it's no such beast. Uh, it doesn't exist that way. So, then what they did is they offered you another loan modification, which was also riddled with problems. And then actually before that, before you completed the first loan modification, they sent you con- uh, conflicting terms. Uh, I think it was five or six days before it was supposed to be the end of that first loan modification. Yes. That were to- was a totally different payment, a totally different thing. Right. And when asked to explain, they went, oh. Yeah. yeah. While still threatening foreclosure. Yeah. Which oh, just caused time. me a yeah. world of stress. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Of course. At the same time, that's just how they play. I mean, the idea that it's their ball and their game and they can do whatever they want, you have no choice 
is it's just not correct. It's just not factually correct. But that's the way the banks do it because the banks want you to operate from a place of fear. They want you to operate from a place where you will do anything that they ask. Give them a kidney if that's what they demand just so they don't throw you out of the house. And in your case, it's doubly hard because you have all the animals. You can't just go rent a house down the street with 150 animals. Most people don't. Yeah, everyone's like, go ahead and sell. Look at the equity you have in the house. I go, the equity won't even buy. It won't even be a down payment on another house. Yeah, I, 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 have, I have rental property and I'm an extremely easy landlord to deal with, but you can't have a cow. And you certainly can't have seven. Uh, I, 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 and 57 pigs. Yeah, and 57 pigs. I, I just imagine what some of the neighbors in a couple of these houses in Valencia especially would think of. But, yo, this is my new tenant. Here's Michelle. She has 57 pigs. Uh, their kids would probably love it, but I don't think the neighborhood, and the city would definitely would be okay with that. Oh, but, yeah, code enforcement would be on my so, head. Yeah, so it's incredibly important that we, that we save the barn here. And getting that message through to MMC was like pulling teeth. I shouldn't say like pulling teeth. My dentist would be upset because he pulls teeth really well. Uh, it was just, it was ridiculous. It was just an exercise in stupidity. It was unnecessary energy. You spent a lot of energy and time. Well, it was necessary because it, it worked. But, um, yeah, it did. And it wasn't, you know, we didn't do this alone. It was your deal. We just helped. But um, so, what, so what happens, let's get you up to the story. So MMC offers you this ridiculous loan modification. In my view, you fulfilled it. To their view, they didn't. And again, they kept the money, but still said you didn't fulfill it. Then they offer you this quasi other loan modification before the first one was even done, which is totally different. That was nonsense. We then get into the picture. We then get them to offer you yet another trial period, yet another modification. And in the middle of all of that, and this is when things finally start to get good, we introduce you to the California Mortgage Relief Program. Oh, that was a lifesaver. I had no idea about that program, and you motivated me. I got denied the first time because of an incomplete application. I was just going to give up. And you're like, no, 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 no. Your team was like, we urge you. Do it today. Mm-hmm. I took your advice, and you even helped me word things and helped me process things correctly and upload files. My it is because of you that I got approved, honestly, I think. Because and, what, I, what, and what did the program provide for you? Um, it's going to cure, cure the default. It's going to pay the, the, the balance now the, uh, of the default of all the forbearance and payments up to date now. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna, and it's going to get me back to the original loan amount that my father, um, my father who passed away, he, he, the loan's in his name. Yeah. It's going to transfer that to me, mm-hmm. and I get to keep his interest rate, yeah. which is a lot rate. better than exactly. any interest rate right now. It, it got me back to where I could actually sustain and keep my payments going. It, yeah, it got me back to where I wanted to be. Yeah, well, well that's, yeah. that's yeah. the whole idea. Yeah, that was the whole idea. So, so okay, so how, do you remember how much you got out of them? Uh, I should say that sounds horrible. I, I'm gonna ha- I, I believe, uh, well, MMC, see, there's a thing too. It also, it's almost like they told me a certain amount, and then they said, well, MMC is going to dictate what's due. And I'm like, okay, well, we're going to make sure the right, you know, let's, well, as long let's as verify that amount. Because the program maxes out at $80,000. Yeah. And if I, MMC wants to max out the program and the state's willing to give it to them, as long as it comes off what you owe and right. it's properly accounted, right. God bless them. I mean, they can do whatever they want with their. According with their to the California Relief Program, the letter they sent me was it would catch me up to June 9th. I don't mm-hmm. know why they picked that. Just out of the air. Okay, not June 1st, not June 8th. June 9th. Because that, that's the cycle that MMC yeah. has. Yeah, this was a month ago that I got that letter. Mm-hmm. To my, to our knowledge, MMC is not, according to MMC, has not received payment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is also the same. We'll get that fixed. But this is Because once you're approved for the program, it's kind of that. It's but yeah, nice, yeah. It's, it's I've already like, taken my breath. I've exhaled. It's, yeah, it's, yes. it's kind of like telling somebody, will you please get your head, you know, on your shoulders here because they're going to give you $80,000. So you can please do that. Right. Uh, so you guys get 80 grand. Michelle gets to keep the property. The, the, the nonprofit Buster's Barn keeps to get going. All the animals get to stay there. Yeah. This is good for everybody. Please get your head out because I need you to pay attention. to this. Yes. And that's the conversation we've been having. We'll continue to have with them. It'll get, it'll get sorted out. But again, this is the kind of stuff that we do. Now I'm being told by producer Carlos that we need to go to break something. So much for talking. We stay through the break. I'd like to talk to you yes. more about this. Oh, perfect. Please do. Uh, okay. We're going to go to break. We're going to, going to hear from some advertisers and uh, we'll come back. We'll talk more about Buster's Barn and Michelle's story and kind of how we got, how we saved the barn. Again, this is Rich Sherman, uh, the Real Estate Fix with Rich on KHTS 98.1 FM AM 1220, your hometown station. We're we'll back after the break. Hi there, welcome back. You've reached the Real Estate Fix with Rich Sherman. I'm your host, Rich Sherman. We're on KHTS 98.1 AM 1220, your hometown station. And we have a special guest in studio today. We have Michelle Stumpf with Buster's Barn, which is an um, animal rescue in Leona Valley that we would like you guys all to support. It's a really, really worthy cause. They do really spectacular work rescuing farm animals and roosters and chickens and dogs and cats and all manner of things. Uh, and they all have good homes there and they get fed. And we were just talking about how they get fed high-quality hay, which is nice. But it's expensive to do that. So if you guys are listening, please, they need 
need your help. Uh, I am not too proud to beg about this, uh, so please, please, please consider uh, donating to Buster's Barn. We'll have all other information up on our website, so you can do that uh, here at the station, or you can just call me directly, and I'll point you in the right direction. They also need volunteers. I think we need to organize a day to get a bunch of people out there and see what we can get done. Yeah. We need to organize some volunteers. So if you if you uh, can if you can turn a shovel, if you can swing a hammer, uh, give me a call. We'll see about getting you out there. 661-714-1400 is my cell phone number. That number again is 661-714-1400. Uh, you can call me that for any real estate matters or anything else. But today we're talking about Buster's Barn because the barn needs the help. Uh, so we were talking when we left for break. We were talking about uh, the lovely people at MMC, who is your mortgage company. You had inherited the property from your dad. Uh, you, you set up the nonprofit there. You've got 150 some odd farm animals there that you're caring for. Right. So they get a fantastically good life, um, which they would not have otherwise had had it not been. Yeah, they wouldn't be for alive. You. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, for you, were it not for you, these 150 lives would not, would have, would, have, would have been turned into. Right. We save the animals that don't make the headlines. I know the cows go running down the streets at the four or five or the five freeway. Those are the ones that always get rescued. We save the animals that no one was coming for. Yeah. No one knew about them. It's, it's a lot of, and, and please. I don't take this the wrong way. I am purchased very happily uh, uh, at, the, at the top of the food chain. I eat meat. I'm not suggesting everyone needs to do that. And I still like you. That. That, is, that is a personal decision. Uh, but, yeah, I like a good hamburger. I, I, I do, and I, that's fine. But I, I, I have no issue distinguishing between this cow is really sweet and wonderful and probably also tasty. Uh, but that's just me, so don't necessarily go by me. And I, I do actually have donors. A lot of my donors are meat eaters, ironically. Yeah. And, you know, it doesn't make him a bad person. It just, well, you know, I'm a, I'm, you can still love a cow. And, you know. I, I will admit something to you that I've never told you before. Donate. I, I, uh, I, I, I only eat chicken because I hate chickens. Oh, no. Uh, you've, met a, you've never met a nice chicken. No, I've never met a nice oh, chicken. Oh, you've never met a chicken who no, sat on your lap and no, you've coddled them. And coddled, no, oh, they're very, they're no. very entertaining. They're my, my, very daughter's, sweet. my daughter's best friend, we call my other daughter because uh, she's just been in our lives and our, we've been in each other's family since yeah. the time the kids were three, uh, loves chickens. Like, like loves them. They're actually very good mothers too. Very protective. Yeah, she, her her whole yeah. room is. She's a seventeen year old girl, and her whole room is like yeah. chicken themed. Yeah. It's like her thing. Never lost her birthday presents for this kid. If it's yeah. chicken themed, she loves it. And meanwhile, every time because I'm a horrible person, every time we go out to eat, I intentionally order chicken. I just think that's foul. I yeah, think that's oh, very foul. Very funny. Very good. Good. Good bit. Uh, no, I do that mostly to you look at me. Oh my God, you're so hard. Then I get wrapped. It. She's very nice about it, and she's got a good head on her shoulders. I like when she uses it. So it's it's funny to listen yeah, to her. Yeah, I don't tell me lecture wrong. people. I, I just I figure you know if they want to come and interact with the animals and get their own opinion that's great if that doesn't change well. their perception of these animals I, you know I can't you can't force someone well to I'm not going to eat the lucky ones who have been rescued by the bar <laughs> That's, you know, okay, well, good. They got, you know, they're, they're, they're better. Uh, they're better off. Anyway, but the point is that the barn needs money because there are lots of animals out there, the ones I don't eat. There are lots of animals out there that need to be, uh, that need to be rescued, that need some help. So let's get back, sorry, get back to the mortgage story. So you inherit, you inherit the, uh, the property, you turn it into a nonprofit. I think you had the nonprofit going. I had the Bitcoin, yeah, I just happened to get the more animals when, you, when, when I got, got the property. From, yeah, yeah, when you got it from your dad. You're in Leona Valley, and you had MMC was your bank. Um, they Formerly Dove and Hill. Yeah. <laughs> Which was actually a key factor in the California Relief Program because at first they said they didn't qualify. Thanks to you and your team, yeah, I, you did a little research and went, hey, 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 do MMC used to be Dovenhuel, and that's Dovenhuel. how, or Dovenhuel, that's Dovenhuel. how they are under the California. So for people who don't know, if you're with MMC, they, it's not listed as MMC under the California Relief Program. It's Dovenhuel. Yeah, Dovenhuel, yeah. Dovenhuel. No, uh, so, uh, um, yeah, that's, 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 that's made a big difference. That's one of many. We had to do this a couple times, but that's one of the many times we had to get on the phone with the bank and say, there's this program out there that the state does that will give the bank up to 80 grand to cure the default, which you guys, you're a bank, you like money, I would think, your investors yeah. certainly do. Um, MMC and they, didn't even know they were part of that program. Yeah, I'm they, like, how they, do you not know that? They, they, they saw this, we're not in the program, and we said, no, yeah, you are, and they said, no, we're not. And it was it was the most, I'm trying to convince you guys to take $80,000 like for to convince, free. trying to convince a child who has a lollipop that they still have the lollipop. Yeah. No, I don't have no, 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 it. No, it's I, in your I, hand. I, I, yeah, it is ridiculous. But again, not the most communicative company. But we got it done. We did convince. And, and they were very happy about this now. When they found out that they were actually approved, because the bank has to be approved for the California Mortgage Relief Program in order to participate in the program. The bank has to do approve for it, not just the person. And most banks are. It's not hard to get approved. When they found out they were approved, they were very happy. I'm shocked that I had to bring them this news, but because that's not my concern. <laughs> My concern there is how many people did they turn away who could have used right. that program with MMC who could still be in their houses now who right. lost their houses because MMC did not know they had That's access to that That's a frightening question. And it's just ridiculous. So, but such is the magic and wonder of a lot of these banks. MMC is really no better or worse. They're just emblematic. They might be a little worse, but they're, they're emblematic of all the banks. We've had similar problems with other banks as well. At one point, Bank of America, which is the first bank to get into this program, still has people working in it today who do not believe that they're in that program. When you look at the banks that are listed, Bank of America, because it starts with a B and because they're huge, is the first one on there. 
And yet we're still having to tell people, no, no, it's a California program. You guys, not only are you in it, you kind of spearheaded it. You're number one on the on the dance yeah. on the dance card there. So you are absolutely. You know, the ignorance anyway. is plenty. Yeah, well, they're they're not paid to be uh, to keep. Yeah, or ethical. They're certainly not paid. Well, that's to be ethical. what they get, that's yeah. what they get paid for. So anyway, so so we got you we got you a modification out of yes. MMC. Uh, then we got you into the California Mortgage Relief Program. Uh, they qualified you for that. And at this point, the Mortgage Relief Program has said, the money is ready, it is yours. We were having trouble getting MMC to accept it. Or I think they actually, did they say they sent it? They said, they, well, no, they actually said that they will notify me when it has been sent. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and you actually, even though, I didn't, even though I'm not going to get the loan modification, which we didn't we want now, it, it actually, thanks to you, it helped that loan modification period help delay. It bought time. It bought time, yeah. it bought time for the relief program to get approved. So yeah. that was huge. Yeah. So we're going to, at the end, of the day, we're going to wind up with the same low interest rate you had to begin with, because the one they were offering you the loan modification was also a lot higher. A lot higher, so that was not going to be in my favor. That's why not what they, I wanted. I mean, it would keep the house, but I was going to struggle. It's why they tanked the first yeah, crop. Yeah, my dad got a really great interest rate, 4. Yeah, four point two. Yeah. 4. 2, yeah. Uh, but they, they uh, in my view, they tanked the first loan modification, because that modification would have been at a 4.2% interest rate. The modification that followed would have been at 5.5, and sure. well, after that would have been around 6. Sure. So every time they offered you help, and I'm making, for those of you who are watching, I'm making a request. Quote, unquote, help. Yeah. Um, they were feathering their own nest because they were raising the interest rate on the on the, on sure. the loan. So I don't know how much they were helping, but at least it would have avoided the program. But anyway, we used that to buy time so we could get you into the California Mortgage Relief Program so you could get the money out of that program so that you could then save the house. And because you're no longer needing to take their loan modification program, they're just going to get a lump sum out of the California uh, Mortgage Relief Program. Yep. You get to keep the, the interest rate, which is kind of the point. So, so I get win, win, you know? yeah, it's a yeah. long, it's a long journey to get to a simple point, which is right. basically back to where you started, just you know, not owing them the money. Right. So, but that's the kind of stuff that we do. We do it all the time. We're very proud of the work we were lucky enough to do for you. You are the top of your game. If this was um, Maverick, you'd be Tom Cruise. If yeah, that's sure. I'll, I'll take that. Yeah, I'm taller. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no comparison. My wife right now is listening, laughing her head off. Anyway. <laughs> She's, yeah, she's she's right now exclaiming out loud. You're not Tom Cruise. Um, oh, come on. Which which which, which is he's which, the best of the best. I, I don't have that kind of time. It's, he's very busy being Tom. Cruise. I don't have that kind of energy. Okay. Anyway, um, no, but this is what we do. We're proud of the work we do. We love doing this stuff, and the fact that we were able to help a little bit because you did most of the work. We just helped point you in the right direction. We're happy to help. Uh, but those of you out there who are listening, if you if you want to donate, please do. Um, you can call Michelle. Give him a give him a phone number. Uh, sure, eight one eight three zero three six eight nine three, and find me on Facebook and Instagram, Buster's Barn. The, the pictures with the moms and their babies. Yeah, yeah, Buster's Barn. Barn. I love that name, Buster's Barn. And you can also get it on YouTube and stuff. That's where I like to watch it. Um, or you can reach me. I'm at 661-714-1400. That's my cell phone, 661-714-1400. And I'll get you hooked up with the barn if you'd like. Also, if you have any real estate questions, as always, you can email thefixwithrich at gmail.com. That's, again, thefixwithrich at gmail.com. I answer all of those questions as quickly as I can. You can also call me at my, on my cell phone. I'll have to answer that. If I don't answer, text me. Look back there. Whatever you need, we can help you out with. We will get you out of trouble. Uh, we can do the same thing for you we did for Michelle, we did for Buster's Barn. I don't know if you have as many farm animals, but we'll be happy to help you out, uh, whether you have animals or not. Uh, so gang, thank you guys for listening. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Michelle, for coming in. And Thanks for having you. me. Oh, my gosh. Tell Thanks us again for saving the oh, sanctuary. My pleasure. You literally saved the sanctuary. Yeah, so. Oh, my pleasure. Uh, I want to get an animal named after him working on that. Oh, I'm anyway, so thank, you guys, thank you guys for listening. I'm, I'm Rich Sherman. This is The Fix with Rich on your hometown station, KHDS 98.1. Have a good week. Be good humans. We'll see you next week.